So, you know, I want to welcome you out to the More Than Luck podcast with myself, Innocence. Um, I want to do yourself a favor, Cold and Wine. Oh, man, I'm Jamarius, a.k.a. Fine Wine Wine House. Any name you want to call me, uh, but, you know, I'm, just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with, you know, we just live in brand for show. And we got a special guest with us on the side of Veggie. Yeah, yeah. Could you introduce yourself, tell them who you are, what's going on with you? Absolutely, man. Name is Ono, Ono Economy. Uh, where do I start? Uh, shit. Uh, I'm Nigerian. That's the first thing I say most of the time. Uh, live in St. Louis now. Love St. Louis. Always got to throw that in there. St. Louis is it's close to my heart now. Uh, who am I? Um, I do events, I work. I just try to connect people and get people to where they need to go. Um, I want people to remember me for like just being that nigga that just put people in the right places in the right time. They went off to do whatever they went off to do. I love that. I just I just want to be remembered as somebody that helped somebody else. Okay, so, so why do you do it? Like, why do you? Why do I do it? Um, I mean, for that, that's my why. Uh, I want to, I, I want to, to, to live an impact on this world and uh, people remember me for helping others. So that's my why for now. But um, the general, the general concept of what I do with events is that we're connecting people to each other. And that could go off to me. People get married, people become best friends forever, people have a baby, I don't know, whatever. But they say, okay, well, I met that person at so, so, and so event, or we met them at Ono's event, or we met, you know, or or we went to this thing that Ono invited us to, and blah, 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 blah. I really, I mean, over the years, I've just really enjoyed hearing those stories. Mm -hmm. And so that has become like a knack for me, something that I want to continue to recreate. Okay. So, so how did you get there? So like, where, where did some start at? Yeah. Start. 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 You know what? We're going to go back. We're going to go way back. I don't think I've ever went before, this far back. My brother threw a party, a house party uh, in Abuja uh, city in Nigeria. Uh, my mom went out of town for this house party. And everybody came from the neighborhood. That's the And I remember I was like, I had to get a and they told me to go to bed. And when people came, I knew it was like a bunch of people in the house. I just came out the room and I just fucking just walked around the house. And I was like, I told my little brother to go. Yeah. So I, I really. Now you're getting twerked. Now you're getting twerked. Now you're getting twerked. And now I got to make sure mama don't find out. <laughs> so I literally, I better not say nothing. I literally oh, walked around the house and, and they had jungle juice. Right? That was the first time oh, I seen it. But it was like. Whatever clear. It was big fruit. I don't know what. I don't know what was in there. Uh, big fruit and blow. I'm like, they got juice. So I, I, I got a teacup from the kitchen and I had a drink. I ain't gonna lie. I don't think I, I've never told this story before, but I had a drink. Mm -hmm. And that was like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. I just, I just drank. I just drank. But, um, and I'm being very candid here, so enjoy yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it was definitely, um, that was like my first experience with like just hanging out. Um, I don't know if that set the tone for what I ended up doing later on, but that was kind of like, that and then when I got to college, I did events with Alpha Phi Alpha, my fraternity. So I, I helped as social chair there. So with that, you know, we, was, we were doing parties with St. Louis promoters. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave me like my first business feel of what it looked like. Uh, I really liked that opportunity. I learned from guys like Hib and Mike Boogie and <laughs> Dynasty, Mike you know, uh, Lucky, 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 I used to see Lucky all the time out. I'm lucky still around doing events too. So, um, but those are the guys that I kind of watched, and then I met like more seasoned vets, like uh, the guys who do uh, First Fridays, Mike. I'm sorry, um, Fred and Harry. Fred and Harry, those guys are legends. Same with legends. So that was kind of like my start right there. I kind of just, I literally just sat at the table, man. Like no, no, no shit. Like I sat there and I just watched them. I just watched them work. I help them, and I just, I just, no, I just no. learn. Okay. Um, so that's it. I don't want to get too too deep in. But that's no, question no. one, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> so where did that espionage come from? Espionage is 
entirely, 100% Emmanuel Zane. Okay. okay. <laughs> he came up with that. I meant it. Got it. Um, but and something my sister has always said to me since I was like 16. She, she used to say, I don't know what I see you doing. I don't know if this influenced what I became or whatever. Sorry, I'm being choppy right now. But my sister said, I don't know you're a brand that influences brands. So sometimes I, I, I go on camera and say like, sometimes I don't, I don't know, I don't have the idea. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is. But when I see a good idea, I know. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so that's why um, on Instagram I call myself the catalyst. So from diplomat? No, no, it's the diplomat. It says diplomat, engineer, catalyst, okay. celebration specialist. You know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what you're doing. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. my resume. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, but the catalyst, what a catalyst is, is a chemical that makes other chemicals react the way they should. Yeah. Or become more powerful in any sense. I don't know if I explained that. No, right. no, no. But that's pretty much what a catalyst does. And I and I and I see that as, <laughs> as something that I've been able to do hey, okay. quite a bit. So what is your life like now and since you've been on it, you know, what was your life before, now, then, and then future? What has your life been since so, your um, um I started as just somebody that was sitting there learning and then I I feel like in I feel like in order to be able to sell anything, you have to use it. Right. You have to patronize it. You have to actually enjoy what the fuck the shit does. That's nice. You know what I mean? So I, I allude I, I use that as an allusion to parties. Like before I started throwing parties, I party. Okay. So I went out there and I fucking party. You know, you know what I mean? We party. Exactly. So right. <laughs> we went out we went out there, we went out there and what's the party. So I'm a new expert too. I know what I like. All right. Yeah, because it was just like the way we party, and which it brought some type of rapport, feel. You know what I'm saying? Where when I, we threw parties, we were actually able to you know pack the place out because right. it was just the feel that we gave. And right. we talk about that all the time now. It's like, what do you do differently? It's like everybody can do a, a lot of the same thing. But it's like, what is your individual niche that people actually want to buy into? Mm -hmm. Is it your personality? You know, with the things you, that you have actually offer. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's why people buy you because you know, it's certain things that you can, are able to do that other people can't. You feel? Mm -hmm. That's true. Man, I, mean, I think I mentioned it's definitely awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah, that's the whole connection. Yeah, yeah, that was it, bro. Yeah, I'll take you see, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'll take you see. Like, well, that's it. Like, I was working and always been helping out behind the stage, bro. Like, you know, I'm just like, boom. And I, it was a step show. Mm -hmm. It was a step show. And then after that, it was rocks. Rocks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, meeting up, and it's like, oh, okay. He, he straight. Like, okay, yeah. what he, he moved? Okay, he moved cool. I can, I can deal with that energy feel good. All right, and then yeah. from there, I was just always like that behind the scenes, mm -hmm. standing with the schools, and I'm just like, all right, oh my, all cool, we good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I see him out, it's always a party, and it's an energy that's yeah. like there. It's always love, and then like you like, all right, what's the next move? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's what is the next move? So just thinking of like making people feel a certain type of way, mm -hmm. how important do you think it is like to expand your brain? And what does that actually look like? Like diversifying your portfolio. <laughs> okay. So do you mean like offering different products? Do you mean like broadening your fan base? Exactly. Mm. See, not you giving out terms, but people should be right. <laughs> because right. These, these are these are things people need to know. Because like getting into situations like market, you just think it's like posting. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But it's actually a whole science behind it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we got actual questions here. Okay, so how important do you think it is to expand your brand and what does that actually look like? Because honestly, to us, mm -hmm. it looks like traveling. And you know, like we set up shop everywhere because we might go, we visit, we visit one time mm -hmm. and then we make sure we go back and we on business next time. Right. So that's how we right. di right. diversify. Right. 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 And so when you do that, that's how you can expand your brand and more people know about it more globally, right. which is going to connect and you know what I'm saying? Somebody going to bite sometime mm -hmm. soon. So that's what it looks like to us, but what does that look like to you? For me, Okay, so I guess when I threw that question back at you, it was because my answer was very different from yours. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to make sure 
But for me, expanding my brand and offering different products. Because that that does two things for me. That reaches a different audience, which is expanding my brand. Yeah. And it also gives me a different streamline for revenue. So expanding my brand would be like branching out into like things like concerts. And honestly, I know this might sound crazy this day, but if I could do a play, a freaking play, I would do one. Would you write one? Or I, you do uh, whether I write it, produce it, fund it, whatever. I don't care. But, or, or, <laughs> what you, you said? Catalyst. Or do something, or just, or just promote it. Whatever, you know, which, which is what, kind of like what I do. So, uh, that would be more of what expanded my brand. Uh, so do just offer different products to where they're reaching different people. And then what that does is that even if you still have your pilot, whatever, like your flagship, okay, you throw parties, right? But you do concerts and you sell lollipops sometimes or whatever the fuck you do. People that experience those brands will then find out about the other thing that you do. Right. So the lady that comes to the play and he's like, oh my God, that was a great play. Like it was put on by Honor Celebrations. Oh, and by the way, Honor Celebrations does these crazy ass right. that are amazing. I'm gonna check one out. Cause yeah, no, nah, man, we definitely gotta clarify, like you, you do more parties, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. I've seen you, you know what I'm saying? I've seen you do uh, voter registration, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Branch out into politics stuff. Like I done seen him do, like I said, your biggest turn up. The thing he, you know he brings so, other people with him bring, along the way. Like, you know, that's how a lot of people get in the door, but you have to be prepared for that. Right? Yeah, right? It's great. Oh, it does. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you have to know you know Because after you, I was talking to my students today about just being reliable. Mm -hmm. And depending on, like, you have to be able to use your network. Yeah. And once you use your network, they're going to rely on you for certain things. Right. So you have to deliver. Deliver. <laughs> oh, oh, what you say? You Absolutely, yes. Frequently, consistently. Yes, all deliver. the time. <laughs> yes. Every time. Um, and... And it's, but, but, but just jumping on that, um, like you, you have to be, you have to also be able to give what you require. You know what I mean? So like when it comes to like business and you're trying to like, or people are saying, oh man, man, I need you to do this, I need you to do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like my best clients or my best people that I really, really fuck with are people that are able to do the shit that they ask me to do. You know what I mean? Like, you ask me the oh you, you got your bottle service you want all of this and you want all of that are you paying on time like are you like coming with the shit like okay I need this and that's just one example right there but yeah. just yeah. different kinds of clients like if you are requiring all of this kind of stuff like, are you able to do that like because that for me and this is just me just I'm not I'm just talking but that transforms a client into a business partner yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you yeah. Have exactly what you said. Yeah, you know, you can be somebody that just came to buy something. We talk about this all the time, like accountability on that. Like, yeah. if we say we give them this, 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 and this, that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. We didn't deal with the numbers of the people there at that time, but okay. if we give what we said we were going to give. Absolutely. So, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this earlier, but I'm, I'm asking you. How do you decide to put whatever event you want to together? And then why do you decide to put it together? Mm, why? Okay, so essentially asking why why I put, why I pick the events that I pick mm -hmm. and why I put them together the way I do? Yeah. Um, you know, I've tried to I've tried to figure out an answer to that. I don't think I have a good answer to that. It's it's a gut feeling that I go with. And so it's a gut feeling, and then I also leverage the people around me. So the people around me, wherever whoever they might be at the time, people, I make sure that I bounce my ideas off of them, and I just talk to them about it, and I say, "Hey, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that?" And in that sense, I'm like fleshing the idea out and seeing the possibilities that it could be, and I just do that. But that feeling is very, very important because if I don't have that feeling, like, "Oh man, this shit gonna be tight." Like, I second guess myself a lot. And I get to like asking questions like, I'll tell you this shit's gonna be dope. I'll be like, you know what, man? I'm about to do a motherfucking beach party and it's gonna be great. And then I start second guessing myself. And then, then you know, and then I know that it's not really there because I'll be like, oh, well, 
maybe my ring at the end. This or that. And I start giving all the possibilities of how I can go wrong. Oftentimes when I start doing that, I, I'm, I pinch myself and I say it might not be a good idea. You know what I mean? But when I have a good idea, it's like my eye, like my eyes light up. Like I just know this shit is gonna be tight. You're putting it work. You like, say, I'm like, like I'm going to make this work. For example, <laughs> like the Kimani Marley thing. Yeah. Like I don't know what the hell it was. I just knew that shit was gonna work. I, now that one was one where I second guessed myself while I still felt like it was gonna mm-hmm. work. But it was like when I heard about it and my guy John told me about it and then we just kind of bounced ideas off of each other. I was like. I mean, that shit would actually be pretty tight. And it turned out to be really good. But it's like just a feeling that I get. I know that's not a very, nah. that's not an answer that everybody can use or, <laughs> or apply to their lives. Nah, you know? I mean, Don't buy that feeling. I think everybody has their people different reasons. Right, right, right. Because right. I know for me, I do things that I want to do. And that's I don't care. Too. That's true too. Yeah. I don't care if nobody wants to do it. I know I want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I know other people that want to do it. So it's like, okay, the people who want to do it, just come out. I'm right. not worried about the people who don't want to. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly and so there after that, that makes that makes more my events more successful, mm-hmm. and it's more win for me because I'm already gonna make my money and make it back. And I and so I do. I I was doing this is most of my brain, mm-hmm. you know, all together. You know, so um, what do you think was needed along the way? Like, meaning like uh, the type of networking, time management habits, social engagement, the type of discipline, self awareness. Like what was needed along the way? Uh, I think mentorship was needed. I think that that's the biggest thing. Like I, I preach that anywhere I go. Like having the right people to to work with, and look up to, learn from. Like I think that's the that's the best shit ever. Because if you don't have that, you just shoot in the dark. You know, when you have people that are mentoring you, like they've done the shit. You know, they they they've made their mistakes. Some of them are willing to tell you those mistakes. Some of them you just see them make the mistakes, and you're just like, okay, I see that. I don't want to do that. I don't do that. You know, um, but I think that's that's incredibly important. I also think discipline is important too, because like, for real, you know, as a youngin, like we were just out here like kicking it, man, like drinking. We was outside. We was not making it to meetings. Like people just, you know, you just you just living a life. You just caught up in the wave. Um, I think that as I got older, I just figured out, like, you know what, I'm going to chill. I'm going to go do what I need to do. I'm going to hang out, too. Cool. But I know that this business and this business is going to take care of me. So, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. So, we're going to do a Spitfire question. Right? Spitfire. Okay. You know, All right. I just go. I just go. So, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. You know. I like that. All right. So, is there anybody that you would like to meet or work with? Jay Z, for sure. You like to meet with him? I would like to meet him and work with him. I just want to stay in his house. And also, <laughs> listen, what the fuck off the record, <laughs> off the record, what what would you like to do with him? I would like to drink like one of those Ace of Spades. Like, just sit down and just smoke a cigar and drink Ace of Spades. And like you said, you like to work with. Him, so. Oh, work! Oh man, man, I don't know, man. I either it either be like. It'll go along the lines of like the Duce Palooza thing. Um, the sponsors that you know about that? No, I don't know. Okay, so quick story. We're just gonna jump into this. Okay. This guy, he starts his party in his basement way like 13 years ago. He, it's all Hennessy. Everything Hennessy in the, in his basement in New York. And he called it Henny Palooza. Oh wow. And it grows into a regional party, just him and his homeboys it was a party. And it grows into like a regional thing. This man flew all over the country doing Henny Palooza for years. It was crazy, killing it everywhere, sell out everywhere. Um, and then after, after a few years, after a few years, he asked for or he seeks out a sponsors from Hennessy. Obviously, right? Why? Why are you not sponsored by them? And I guess they said no. They said Hennessy sells enough. We don't need to. We don't need to do that shit. Jay Z said. And Jay Z said, "I got to say, and I don't know how that meeting happened. And bless whoever made that shit happen. That shit is beautiful. But somehow Jay Z heard about it and was like, fuck them. Do say. <laughs> and they call it Do Say Blue. Right. So if I could create any kind of brand with anything else, Minute Maid Palooza, whatever, 
with Jay Z and it can tour the country and the world, yes, I would love to do that. Okay. Sorry, I was a little long with no, that. No, I had to tell the story. Yeah, no, we didn't know. Some people don't know. You know, man. But that thing is dope. That thing was. I hope that story was fully accurate. If it wasn't, it was a long. Yeah, it was a long those lines. Okay, if you could be in any movie, what movie would you be in? I will be in fucking Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me. Have you? Do you guys know that movie? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I love that fucking. Uh, I'm sorry. Was that was living. <laughs> <laughs> he was living his best life. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? Gosh, uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. This is bad. I think about money. It's okay. not good. It's not good. All right. I'm sorry. So do you feel like you should be thinking about something else? Probably, like family and love and all the other shit. <laughs> regular, <laughs> regular people drop me in the line. Like, I literally, I wake up, I wake up, I turn, I get on the side of my bed like this, literally. I, I get out of bed, I do this, and I'm like, and I'm either thinking, what the fuck am I supposed to do today? I'm going to work, I'm going to make this money, or I'm about to go and sit. I'm thinking like about somebody yeah. is saying that. <laughs> I got shit to do. Right, and right. I got right. stuff I need to accomplish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, the love that's that's gonna come genuinely, that's gonna come organically. Mm-hmm. You gotta figure that's that real. out at this point. That's real. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like all the other stuff don't matter because I still gotta be stable for whenever this stuff comes. Absolutely. Like so, let me take my accountability now and say, how much am I making today, and do I meet my quota? Right. <laughs> my quota. There it is. I like the, I like this round, but okay. How it goes? Huh? Uh, sorry. Hi. Okay. Emos or pie? So, Emos all day. Thank you. I mean, you act like I don't like. Uh, you act like I like pie. I say that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Jamie trying to come for all things St. Louis, but he still give us love. All right. But like, you know you love this place, but man. Like, I like I like St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you gotta just, I had a one. I had one of the fans. Man, St. Louis taught me so much by yeah. itself. All right, what's your favorite pair of shoes? Shit, some both places. Okay. Hazelwood Central or Hazelwood East? Hazelwood East. Thank you. Because you went to Hazelwood East. It makes no difference, but Hazelwood East is the Because, Ian, what makes, I mean, besides, okay, you said Hazelwood East, man. What else? Hazelwood East got so much culture, man. So nobody else got the culture here? Not like Hazelwood East, though, man. Hazelwood East is like the bedrock of St. Louis, man, for real. Is it for real? I know. Say that. I well, say that. Hey, define bedrock. Somebody has to say, know how to get me. You got to trust people. I'm like just going to say you know this. I'm just going to say this. Yeah, I'm just going to say this, right? How many championships y'all got? Oh, look. I, you know, I ain't even getting into all the sports. I'm more of on the cultural side, hey. man. That's what. And, and what I'm So, classy building that when, when the culture at all? What? Who? Classy building. Or, or, or bat. You feel me? Or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> or, uh, oh, man. if you go to Florida any South club Jersey. in St. Louis right now, okay. you're gonna be the Hazelwood East person. Okay. You look at all the good shit that's happening. A lot of good shit that's happening. There's a lot of same Hazelwood East people. They go to Central. Hmm? I'm just saying. I'm you just know what? Maybe I see it because I went there. You probably because you do. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like facts are all so facts. But, I don't know. Yeah. People are, but if the people are there, they're there, right? They're there. I know a good seven, eight people made it. Uh, what is these? Uh huh. Yeah, I know. And they that's all it. great people, correct? I know. That's, that's, that's a lot. Don't, don't, you, that, 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 don't you think one person knowing seven people in high school that he didn't even go to school? I mean, we were in college together. Exactly. I was in Plymouth. I was in Plymouth. You a whole team. You from right. another place, and you came to another place, and you know seven people because from they the same high school. school. It don't make a difference. But I also know a lot of people with the other schools. But no, no, we talking about. <laughs> and if we go to St. Louis, then we go to St. Louis, but that, you know what I'm saying? That can touch different things. That's all I'm saying. Don't be disrespectful right. to the coach. What is your favorite sports team? Super Eagles, brother. <laughs> so, so Super Eagles? Yeah, soccer. Yeah, soccer. Yeah, soccer. soccer. That's soccer. That's yeah, I understand. Right there. There's culture. Yeah, it's different. Different, it's different, different over here. Different over here. Over it's here, football. Know? And I like their jersey, really. Yeah. Their team kind of. Okay, anyway. Where do they play it? Soccer is a Nigerian soccer team. Oh, that's Nigerian, Nigerian, yes. Nigerian national we'll soccer team. This is green like cream, man. Like green. This they guy. got the new this guy. This guy. Cool, oh, man. Come, come on, man. Come on. This is real facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? He just threw the name out like the Super Eagles. Yes. What the fuck is a Super 
Okay, I know it's okay, okay, okay. okay. I should have given you some context. Yeah. <laughs> no, you are all right. We knew. Uh, <laughs> my, my stomach. Oh, he's here. Hell all right. Loud, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Sheesh. I would, I would, I would really like to turn back time. I can just go back whenever I want and just go change whatever the fuck I want to change. See, okay, so this is my issue with that. I'm back. No, <laughs> no, this is my issue with that. He'd be changing stuff all his life. And I only say that because when you change one thing in the past, it, it, it oh. affects everything else. So now, that's real. That, you know what I'm saying? That's a movie. That's a movie. Is, is that already out? I don't know. Right? But I'm just saying, so I, I just feel like that, I, I understand. Right. I completely understand. So what superpower do you have then, since you were getting that? Yeah, yes, 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 tell us. G, to be honest. Super strong? No. <laughs> I'm already I got strong. that. I'm already strong. I got that. Got that. I'm already here. You know what I'm saying? I'm already here. <laughs> to be honest. You'll be a mind reader. Yes. Yes, yes bro. Well, I mean, so I don't know what you're about to do. It's all mind. The mind is weird. No, like, I feel like because for me, I, I just want, I be wanting to know certain people's mentality of why they can't get out of way, the situation they in. Uh-oh. So, like, it. so I'm like, why, what's your excuse now? Like, you know what I'm saying? And everybody got their story, of course. I'm not saying some stories ain't as bad as others, but the reality is, typically, you able to fix that shit. <laughs> typically. <laughs> typically. <laughs> typically. <laughs> is this thing on? You know what I'm saying? Like, typically, you able to fix that. So, what is your excuse? And so, I can fix that excuse so I can figure out if you just on bullshit. Right. Because that means I gave you exactly what you needed to be successful, <laughs> and you chose not to do it. See, I'm, my mind is what you going to fix. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'll be invisible. Jay, wait, I'm always BSing for five. The last time I said I would teleport, so I could be able to, you know, that's like a power one bitch. Right? 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 So, so I can right? pop up on a bitch. Oh, the big time. I don't know what my mind thought is if I could just go in the dark. If I could just go in the dark. If I could just go in the dark. Wow, you can have any superpower. Any superpower. Oh, you want to be Wonder Dust? <laughs> I'm like, man, you glow in the dark, that should be dope. No, Jay. <laughs> Look at that glow in the dark. That's it. I'm like, I need something good. I'm sorry, this nigga is like, no. <laughs> but this nigga hey, said glow in the dark. I'm like, glow in the dark. <laughs> That's why I started laughing twice. I'm like, nigga, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you. Something wrong with you. That is funny. Oh, that's too funny, bro. <laughs> All right. So if you were stuck on an island, Mm. And, and you can only bring three things. Woo. What would you bring? Whatever. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Whatever you want. Time out. 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 There was a flaw in her plan. There was after I, after there I was watched not. it, and she didn't bring enough gas. <laughs> she needed another <laughs> thing of gas. Wait, what's going oh, on? Okay, so you gotta watch the, the podcast. Okay, all right, it's cool. Let's go. 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 Listen, so right. go right she, So at the end of the day, bro, listen, she had, she wanted a plane. She said she would bring a plane mm-hmm. so she could fly off the island. Jay mm-hmm. wants to take that away from her. Why you bring a plane? I said, you she can bring, bring, bring a plane. So she said, I'm playing so I can fly off the island. <laughs> but you don't know how to fly. You I, have to be I able to carry it. That's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. She might have brought a plane, but does she know how to fly one? That's what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, she I got it. time to figure it out. <laughs> you know, you could have bought movies and fuck the whole thing up. Blow up on you, you dead. Yeah, how far you gonna go? You gonna, you gonna, she gonna end up right. living on that fucking no, plane. No, she's not. Right. It's right. It's she gonna, she's gonna, gonna, gonna glide until she glides into some land. What happened? She went out of gas. She can bring the gas. But she. Okay, you're saying the plane is not intuitive. Like, how should you say? Yeah. How should you go put the game? Right now? Yep. Absolutely. All right. Bottom bottom. If you could work with anybody, dead or alive. These questions. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> dead or alive? Who would I work with? I know this is messing up. I would definitely want to work with uh, Nelson Mandela. No why? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but what he did, like what he persevered through, mm-hmm. and what he was able to do for South Africa, right. as a whole. Right. Can you imagine 
all of the things that come with that, like being like president after going to prison, like think about the book deals, think about the events, the char charity events, like all of the things that go into where he got to. Mm -hmm. So I, when I say work with him, it doesn't have to be like, I'm gonna be a politician or I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? But just think about all the things that happened along the way to where he got to. Mm -hmm. And just being able to be a part of that, whatever it may be. Um, that man has been as open like for like, he, he's just been everywhere as regards to like, appearances and all of that so he's, he's any, be remembered exactly know, in, in any of that capacity even if i just booked his speaking engagements okay. you know what kind of you know what kind of work that would be you know yeah. what i mean so i used to book his engagements <laughs> right <laughs> you know what i mean or whoever up? Up? <laughs> these, these big <laughs> They already got a book deal, yeah. and they already got all this shit. Sometimes they just got it. The shit is written. They just gotta read it, and that's another fucking deal. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. All right. All right. All right. So all of these things are like. Would you agree to that? So I want to you read eventually. You know, children's books. Yeah, absolutely. What type of would you use your book to like? You know, different books for children. You know, man. Maybe I. I, I can do different accents and shit. So yeah, yeah, that is true. That <laughs> is true. So, so, that, so that might be a thing. What yeah. accent can you do, actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play that song. Nigga, what was that? He said, actually. He got his own accent. He was trying to do. This is a different side of Jay. He was trying to diversify. Oh, <laughs> my God. He was trying to diversify. Oh, my God. It's cool. <laughs> so like, cause like, we just really shooting the shit today. Dude, dude, it's just like your voice yeah. at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. So, so yeah, your so your voice. You know, I, I use my voice to <laughs> do different accents and shit. Okay. Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> real, weekends or weekdays? Weekends. I live for the weekends. I live for the weekends. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love the weekends. Okay. Monday's up. Monday, 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 Monday. So, because, okay, when you are partying, right, mm. or when you put it together, you know, mm. that, let's be with you. Walk through the process to the point where you are genuinely able to just enjoy the party. Man, it's an age old question. Man. I don't, I don't really. I, I be moving. Like, I enjoy I'm it. Like, first off, I'm just like, yo, I'm going to go home. Let me get with my boys. I'm going to be chilling. Like, I'm just here for security. They work out. I enjoy very few of them. I ain't going to lie. I enjoy very few of them. Um, that's the one. So, the ones that I do, I, I enjoy very few of them. Um, because for me, it's just in the beginning, I had to. Like, I had to run around and like, just make sure everything was good. I did most of the VIP service. Like I really was, I wanted to see what was happening in the whole operation, literally. Um, and then as I advanced and had other people that helped me out and stuff like that, but I still wanted to be part of the whole operation. So, and, and I don't think I really let that happen go. I try to scale back a little bit, but you know, what's so crazy about a party is that people come, they have a good time and they leave. But they never really, really, or nor do they care about all the things that go into like making it happen. Mm -hmm. The before, the you know, the after, mm -hmm. the during. Um, so so much shit that happens that the average party goer, the average party goer has no idea is mm -hmm. happening. They, they, they don't, don't know if they, they enjoy their show. <laughs> right, they don't care. Did they get what they said they was coming for? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I enjoy very few of them, man. And, and I just, I just want to be part of the operation. I want to go out. But even though I say I don't enjoy it, I don't enjoy it as a party goer. For a party planner, promoter, whatever you call me, I enjoy it for seeing the success and seeing the people. So, like, when I, when people come out, like, I'm going around, I'm talking to folks, I'm saying, hey, what's up? I ain't seen you in a minute. Like, I, and seeing them enjoying themselves. That yeah, shit, that, that, that shit feels good for me. You know what I mean? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. I'm telling you, 
There's nothing worse than sitting at an empty party and nobody came. It, it's the pits. So you never want to feel that shit. Yeah. So when when people come out and fuck with you, like that in itself, you got to appreciate that shit. Because mm-hmm. every, everybody ain't getting that. You know what I mean? So. My you, first, first five party that we did. You see that? Like, yeah. As we grew, they had espionage doing things. Like, people would just be throwing parties and throwing parties. And they didn't actually take into accountability the type of bonds you have to create. Right. Which actually makes your parties more successful. They think that they can just post a flyer and not do the hand and the groundwork. And that's where we started taking over because we actually did the groundwork, yeah. which built the bonds. And where you can start joking with people that last week makes things in Spain. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's real. Um, so that's a spitfire around. Uh, do you have any questions? I really enjoyed that. Do I have any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Um, yeah, okay. So, so I have a question for you, Jay. Because you had a very, very unique like, transition from promoting to photography. So, what was that spark? that got you, because literally one day, I'm going to tell y'all right now, Jay just literally woke up one day and was like, I'm going to pick up a camera, I'm going to do this shit. And he just started doing it. Like, fucking doing it. What was that, what was that, that? Man, to be honest, <laughs> drink, <laughs> drink to that, drink to that turn. Drink right. to that turn. Drink to that. I wish I could bang, bang, bang. But honestly, it was, we, the Sig Talk situation happened. Okay. And so, mind you, I was, we was in Sig Talk. It's a white frat house. I got skinny jeans, I got blonde hair, I got some blouse shoes, and a white, I mean, a uh, yellow v-neck shirt. Jesus. Loud. Sounds like Jay. Loud. You got the mohawk at the time? I did. Yeah. I did. Stupid. Loud. Y'all should have seen it. it was and he would try to convince me to go, I'm like, no. Oh, like, I'm at Sig Talk, you know. Cause Sig Talk was strange, bro. Me, you feel me? I'm a big man on campus. I'm good. He was that man. So <laughs> he just talked me into it, and he had on the orange uh, V-neck sweater, burnt orange. You feel me? With the khaki, the same type of hat, but it was like brown on the same. So I'm like, no, I'm not just appropriate. But I ended up going to the club, to the club, ESO at the time. And so I went in, so everybody was looking at me like, you know, who, who was who the was this guy? They didn't let him in, by the way. They did not, yeah. They did not. They, did not, they, they was like, who the fuck is this guy? Who is this guy? I'm not. I'm dressed uh, like a hot boy. You feel me? Like, it's time we roll over here. <laughs> but, but, once I got in, yeah. yeah. yeah so we drank around all night. That's all we drank at that point in time. But, you know, I was hanging around and just promoting, and, you know, I, actually, I really don't like but I've, I've done promoted and I'm just like, okay, that's not enough for what we got going. And I already bought a camera for my band at the time so we could do video and do whatever else we needed. And I'm like, well, if we can keep the money in house, then that's the best thing we can do. So the first one I did was at uh, Rust to Go. Mm-hmm. And I think after that, that's when I was able to start getting creative because I thought about doing that commercial for the graduation. That was like, you know, they weren't even doing video commercials. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that was really cool, man. That so 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 uh, a little backstory. So after he picks up the photography thing, I remember, and and unfortunately, I don't I don't mean to sound crazy, but somebody canceled on that photography gig, mm-hmm. and then Jay was just like, "I'm gonna do it." I was in I was in Raleigh at the time, so I wanted to shoot a commercial for my party, mm-hmm. and and. I was in Rockla and Jay was like, when the person came, Jay was like, I'm gonna do it. I was like, what the fuck you mean you're gonna do it, Jay? You know, you know what I mean? Never shot shit. Jay was like, I'm gonna do it. I said, all right, cool. So Jay had a camera, he goes with, was it Nina at the time? Yeah, Nina. Nina, shout out to Nina. Nina's dope. She's dope with that. <laughs> uh, it goes with Nina and they just, and they do the commercial and it turns out to be like fucking dope. Like, Really, really good. And hey man, Jay, after all of the stuff that I've seen, like your brand just like flew, man. Like like I still sit down and think about the photography piece and how like that came out of nowhere and you just ran with it. And you, it was just your shit and you just did it and you just kept on doing it. And what I love the most about what you do is your consistency. Like a lot of people don't. A lot of people like they do shit. 
you had your bumps and bruises. You had, you know what I mean? You fell down a few times. But a lot of people, they fall down, they, they just lay down, and that's it. It's a wrap. Like, I've seen people that say, oh, I want to throw parties. And they throw one bad party, and they're like, it's a wrap. So, I'm never doing that shit again. <laughs> 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 at, at a small ass like that, like, I'm never doing that shit again. Like, what did you do? You got to learn how to lose sometimes. But I think, like, I learned all that, like, I took a lot of look with you, though. And yeah. together, it's like we did it together. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's just like when I decided to really get in the game, because you were trying to get in the game three years ago. To be real, you was like, you and Shatis, that we put it on the table, that we need to do something before you left in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, that's not what I want to do. I'm not in the party. So then I got, I just watched, and, you know, the whole game, you know, just play around. And I'm like, okay, I figured out what I want to do. It makes sense. Because I talked about doing flavors probably a long time ago when I first seen Art Beats and Lyrics at uh, Neo. And I'm like, I could do something different and it'd be a little bit more fly for, my, for me and what my culture is. And then, you know, that's why I decided to start doing everything else. After that. Yeah, it was great. It was fast. That's when we get it the most love. Man, we just, we just, we just talked to, we just, <laughs> we just jumped, jumped out on them on that one. Yeah, that's about it. Man. So, I mean, how do you want to be remembered? Ah man, ah, really, really like for real. I just, I just want to be remembered as as that guy that, that that put the right people together. You know, like made people smile, but at the same time was able to like connect people to, to to themselves and to a greater whatever, a greater purpose. Uh, I think that we're doing we're able to do that with parties. We're able to do that with just genuine connections. You know, uh, if if I leave this earth and somebody says, you know what, man, I met this person at this place and the person turned out to be my best friend was because that nigga did that shit, Mono did that shit, or whatever the case may be. Like I think that that that's something. Um I just I just also want to remember I know this might sound really, really true, but as a good person. Mm -hmm. And I was a good guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For whatever that Well you're not like a giant guy where you, you know, killing people. Yeah, no. Nah. But, I mean, but you're providing the service that is definitely needed in our type of market. Fair. Like, you need a type of market where you, where you can actually transition into a new market mm -hmm. to people. But you, you do a good job of connecting both. Mm -hmm. So when they go to, like, another uh, network event, they know some of the people, mm -hmm. right? So you're preparing them mentally and physically for their next step so they can see what their future will look like. So these people got awards. You know, they got the Power 100, 30 under 30. And other awards that people can actually see and look up to, so they can see what they need to, mm -hmm. to fit those same bills, so they can push, you know, for that community that the people really serve. You know? So we do a, another segment. This is new. When you posted this, mm -hmm. what did you mean? Oh shit! I like that shit. Thank you. That is dope. So that is a good idea, by the way. So April eighteenth, we can make a show out of that. By the way, okay. what did it mean? Exactly that. Yeah. That's not. Uh, so we'll show it on. Okay. Good. Yeah. You know. What's on? Well, my first house, man. Like, I, I was really excited about that. Yeah. Um, I've been looking at, at getting something for a while. I bought some stuff for my parents before, but I never bought anything my on my own. Mm -hmm. So that was like my first, first, first property. So I bought a two-family flat on the south side, and. You know, I just, I have friends that have done it and, and, and have multiple properties. But I, it was just one of those things where it's like, if you, if you don't do it, I don't know how to put this, but it's one of those things where it just seems like a mountain, like, like just high, unattainable goal. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take that first step or you don't just try to do it, you're never going to do it because you're going to make up all the excuses about, oh, I don't got this, I don't got this, you know, whatever, whatever you come up with. So that one was, I was really proud of the fact that I just, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna do this and I did it. Mm -hmm. So very proud of that one, man. It's a good day. It's a good day. Right. First right. house, man. first crib. And you, how old were you when you bought your first crib? 29. 29. Yeah. And so I got another question. Cause you actually did a lot to usher in this culture into the St. Louis, the 90 culture. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so they, they didn't play. I, I was talking to one of my friends on the phone. Either it was probably two days ago. I'm like, I remember when y'all used to say y'all didn't like going to parties. Like that. They played nice music. I'm like, oh, it's nice music for a little while. Mm-hmm. And now you hear that in everybody's party, mm-hmm. right? Like it's been it's 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 like you was on Wiz Kid before. And a lot yeah. of people, okay, you yeah, know, you was on Burner Boy before. We was, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, my first song I actually uh, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, who that I, hey, who, yeah. I remember that. I yeah. remember that. That was great. So like how how does it does it now like how does it feel to know that you are probably you can say that you are an engineer of bringing that I mean you are an engineer, let's be technical. So let me say a pioneer bringing in that in that culture because you actually did usher it in. Yeah, it's it's same way. But it say Ono side of Benji brought in. I, uh, I don't know if I can take order. I don't know if I can take all the rights for it, but but I will say that early on, like we were jamming to that shit. Like, but it's like, but for me, it was, for me, it was natural. So I don't see you. That that that's like the party by Burner Boy, old song, dope song. Um, y'all should check it out. Anyway, um, she not the green. <laughs> when when we first started the parties, I think we put it as a signature. Like we would play an Afrobeat song or a few Afrobeat songs at the end of the party, and this was like really early. And it was this was when like people were actually not very happy with it. They were like, "What? Like what the fuck?" And it was like literally how it goes that we had this party, we packed everybody would be there, and you would just see people, right? And then when <laughs> when the Afrobeat song would come on, it was like a corner of the party would just go crazy. And they were like, oh, that's the Afrobeat. Yeah. That's what they have. You right. know what I mean? And but, but we, but we love that culture, shit, though. man. We love like, But after a while, now it's like when Afrobeat comes on, like a whole party goes. Right. Everybody you know, moving. Like, you know, hey, everybody. Do do <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Let me bring it up. Right. You take it down. You right there with it. You know? That's so, right. uh, but, right. but, yeah, um, it's just it's just genuine love for your shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not in, in the most crudest of ways that I can say that. You know, we just we just love our music. We love what we did. We, yeah. we appreciate the culture. This is where we're from. So it's just like one of those things where it's like you got something good, you want to share it with the world. Mm-hmm. And that's what that was for us. We were just kind of like, man, we love this shit. Mm-hmm. You gonna know about it. You gonna know. Everybody's gonna know about it. So like my my good friend, like you know, you know, uh, Kayla Reed. Yeah. Man, Kayla Reed loved Burner Boy more than we loved Burner Boy back in the day. Like, she was like, man, Burner Boy is the best thing smoking since sliced bread. So it's like, now that Burner Boy is uh, uh, nominated for Grammys, doing world tours, like, people are like, oh, Burner Boy. Like, everybody knows Burner Boy. Like, we was listening to him, like, back then, like, yeah, going crazy. Like, people were like, what are you doing? Like, what is that? So, I just appreciate being able to pass on that culture to anybody else. Like you can't go to no club or no boy. Oh yeah, like Burner Boy is being played like in St. Louis. You you go to Gonzalez, the uh-huh. Marquee, uh, Blue, wherever they're playing. They're playing, and it's like kudos to you and you know the people who also help. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, I think yeah, y'all niggas didn't love that shit. I probably like that. Yeah. Well, I'm open to you know. You know so he loved that song, he laid you, man. Man, we played that like five times. Mm-hmm. And it was another song he liked back in the day. Uh, if she say that she's a lady. Now that's, that's whiskey. That's that. If she say she's a lady. I forget it. I forget it. I'm sorry. She's not to agree. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> not to agree. He said, I know my part. <laughs> <laughs> I know my part. But no, it's like the saxophone was killing that. that, that I, it's a whiskey song. Yeah. I remember that song. So, man, but. Uh, Man, so do you got any events coming up that you want to talk about? Events coming up. Honestly, my 2020 calendar is pretty relaxed right now. We're working on it. Um, I do have some cool stuff that I'm working on. I turned 30. March, March 29th. Okay. So um, I want to do something nice. Uh, I want it to be community-based a little bit, though. So right. that I have a piece of small businesses. I have a piece that... Probably gives away a scholarship or something. Like I don't know, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but I want that to be part of what I do. Um, 
that's what we need. Okay, so we need, to, we need to get up on that. Um, so that's in March. In February, I'm working on World Buddha's Brunch, however that's going to go. Uh, but, I mean, right now, in the state of society, it's something very really important. We need to vote. So that'll be something in February. Um, so something very exciting is coming to St. Louis. And I want to say this here on you guys' podcast. Larry Green. If you haven't heard of Larry Green, Larry Green is a guy, mark my words right now. Larry Green is a dope comedian in St. Louis. He went to his Woody's. <laughs> really funny guy though. No, no, no. I don't know what the is. Let's not take away Larry Green's shot right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Larry, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but, but really though, Larry Green is taking St. Louis County to see him by storm. He's winning everything left and right. He's traveling the country. He's killing shit. So he's having a show February twenty first. I don't I don't really remember where it's at, but he's having a show February twenty first here in St. Louis. So solo show, like it's his thing, mm-hmm. but he's like bringing in comedians from from around. He's really really good, and I think that in the next three or five years, like he's gonna be a national name. Like everybody's gonna know. Him. So I wanted to just mention that he's having a show February twenty first. So I'm really, I'm probably gonna do something with him this year, uh, but right now I got to March, man. I don't have anything else. Um, I would like to do florals in again this year. Um, I don't know where you're gonna be at, but if you would like to do that, that'd be dope. And then I'm really, really open to like just different ideas of like different stuff that that people would love to see. You know what I mean? Well, I'm thinking about just something. Until tell if it's good or not. Okay, you gonna like? Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So what you think about nipple face? And he's serious. I know it sounds off the wall. He's we just, I'm just already there. But we just but we just living the nipple face. I'm just saying it's a market. Okay, 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 okay. It's James. Okay, let's so let's let's, 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 let's work let's work through this. Let's work through this. Let's and let's talk about it. All right. So what okay, so just a a woman, right? Twenty five year old woman right now. What would make her want to wear we just live in pasties? Because it's a sexy thing on your nipples. <laughs> Where is she going to wear it to? Is she going to put it under the bra? Or what's going on? She has a lace. Right? So right. they should have a lace. So they should have someone to go with their nipples to be out. They okay. They're going to cover them up. So guess what? When the lace seat comes, you're going to see the we just live in. And then the niggas going to know she <laughs> might be with She might be with Because we just live yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, second, right? All right, all right. If, all right. I, if I were to get into makeup, okay, right, that's a booming industry right, right now. I would call it caked up. <laughs> you like it? You like it? You like it? You like it. You like it. <laughs> we got one. We got one. We got one. Uh, caked up. So, so what's the what's the idea behind it? You know, uh, like the, the, the some people say your face be or you know cake, you know caked up. Yeah. You would have to, you would have to literally change the, the initial thought process of what caked up looks yeah. like. You know, cake. Because it's just like, no, it's because makeup caked up. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's like, not, it's not good. Like, you literally you have so to change it. So, 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 so when you put this on, you feel night. like money. You, yeah. you caked up. Yeah. You know, so see, there we go. My boy be coming up. There we go. It's just what I do. It's just a cute name. Yeah, it's got you though. Okay. Thank you. I, 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 I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. I'm looking like a cake. Cake up bacon. Trying to get my weight up. Yeah. In the cut, rubbing dupe. I'm still that. Oh, you're. Hello. He's on the quote. Take that off. Right. 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 I like it too. This is probably the best seller. Man, look. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to say this on camera, man. I just want to say cash at you and get my shit. I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want to go anywhere else. So today, I want right, to send you one thing and you're just going to just give me my shit. That's fair. Uh, we can talk about that. So today, uh, I had a exclusive meeting with my uh, printer guy. Uh-huh. And so um, I will be having my own store in St. Louis. Oh, so, so you can buy my stuff down on Grand. See now, now we're talking. Yeah, you Pull can, up. Exclusively, you can go buy my stuff. So, I love that. I love that. Well, we're waiting on you, bro. Yeah. 
It's no, but, but real shit though. Like I, I ain't mean to sound rude, but it's like sometimes it's just, I just, you know, what I mean, cash app is so convenient. Yeah. I mean, and then I can just meet you. So I'll be glad. I got your address in my phone. Yeah, I remember. I used to get, he used to get really frustrated. When I asked him for my for his address. I would come to his like, house literally every two I'm weeks. Asking me, you know where I stay. And I'd be like, then I put it in the phone. Then he put it in the phone. He said, "Nigga, I'm gonna cut this out right you now." You gonna quit asking me this bullshit? And now you got no excuse. None. Today, today I just said, you know, I ain't me him, but so, it's my. <laughs> you can search, right? Say search in there. I know you got yeah, You know, I tried. I tried. It was all good. Thank you. All right. Um, any more questions? No. Um, so, so that one was for you. I think. I think we got that transition right. from, you know, promo to photography. Mm -hmm. I got one for you. Uh, so my question for you is, honestly, and this might, this is very different. Is that how do you handle being a father? Mm. I told you it's very different from that. That's it. Oh, <laughs> God. That's so, right. so where are we going? We need another drink. <laughs> this is very different from it. I didn't drink that. I can't drink it. Man, to be honest, this shit different. Okay, that's honest. Um, reality is because I'm in the stage of taking risks. It takes away a lot of time. Okay. So like you gotta like sacrifice the moments to make it. And they be like, alright. As long as I make the, the crucial moments, like you gotta understand why I'm not really there as much. You know what I'm saying? So like if it pays as long as it pays off, which right. I'm willing to bet on myself at this point. We got six minutes. Six minutes. Yeah, we can make that shit good. Yeah. Six minutes we can definitely make that shit. Alright, so we on? Yep. Um you know, St. Louis is a very, very difficult market. Yeah. People are hard to please. They hate what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, they kind of hate on each other too. Mm -hmm. So when you add all of those factors in, it's a very, very, very tough place to grow. Uh, so if you're able to break into this market in any, in any facet, whatever you do, you'd be selling toothpicks. But if you're able to break into the market and be able to sell those efficiently, mm -hmm. it means that you've been able to break down the barriers of people hating on you, yeah. um, people not liking you because initially they don't know you, mm -hmm. um, and being able to give them what they want and they're happy with it. I think that that makes you very, very, very ready for like any other market because a lot of the other markets out there are looking for something new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh uh, man, there's some new shit? Oh yeah, I'm going to that shit. You know what I mean? They want to do that. They want to buy that. They want to accept that product. Or other markets that are just generally bigger. And in bigger markets, you have sponsorship, you have all kinds of things more available to you. And you have a bigger pool of people to pick from. And, I, and when I talk about business, I'm talking about either providing a service or providing a product. Either way, you have more people to sell to, right? Mm -hmm. So St. Louis prepares you for just being able to be very, uh, what word? I mean, very rigid, very strong. Like you're not, you're not about. Somebody might tell you that your shit is whack, but if you know what you're, what you're providing, you ain't, you're not gonna listen to that. So that, so you already silenced the haters right there. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody, what else? People that hate on you, like people, people literally that are competing against you will probably say something bad about you like say ah oh, man your stuff is whack and this is somebody that i mean we in the same business like we selling the same product like why are you talking about me yeah. you, that's not good you know mm -hmm. what i mean but but if you're able to still sell to the people and they buy it and they're like oh man this is great you've been able to silence that person so if you can do all of these things in same in the st louis market which is small and people overlook this market, but it's a microcosm for life. It's like a crucible. When you look up a crucible, it's a crucible. But anyway, it's like a crucible, and it's like when you're able to get out of that, like you tougher, yeah. you ready for whatever. Yeah, almost, <laughs> I feel like they almost like when you think of get any big market, like New York, they hate like you. I always love hip hop, so I can relate to my students. And you see, like everybody just hates on each other, and a lot of the, these markets. 
basically every city that everybody hates from each other. So like you definitely once you make it, you can make it out your city. Mm -hmm. Cause your city, they actually kind of know your upbringing. They know if you hard, they know if you mm -hmm. soft. Mm -hmm. So you, if you can get out of that, <coughs> you can definitely make it anywhere. Because I feel like when we travel, it's like okay, we're not doing anything different, but we just bringing a whole other type of. Man, y'all got y'all got a different hustle, man. You don't yeah. know it. It's just like it's just like when I first came to America. Like people like man, I like your accent. I'd be like, what accent? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. You don't you don't know you know you don't know what you got until you go somewhere else and then you peep it and be like uh, you guys move different niggas is not I'm telling you with with, with the size of you guys' brands and, and no disrespect but you guys brands is a smaller brand right now right niggas with those size of brands are not traveling to other cities to go to pop up shops and you guys are doing it consistently that's a different that's a different hustle bro like. People are like, oh, my brand is, oh, my brand is not there yet, so I'm just gonna stay in my city and do what I do, and I'm gonna make the money that I make. Mm -hmm. Nah, but y'all moving around, y'all doing it here, and y'all taking it elsewhere. A lot of people are not doing that, and that that's like, that could help you guys grow very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure you're already seeing it. Mm -hmm. So, you might think that ah, oh, just being in St. Louis is whatever, but like St. Louis really prepares you. And then one thing I was gonna say about the people hating on each other it's like in Texas if somebody if people are hating on me I can literally move to the other side of Texas or, or start selling on the other side of Texas and still pop yep. Yep. can't do that shit in St. Louis nah. <laughs> and right if, if niggas don't like you like you just yeah, yeah. that's it yeah. you know that's it for you but except you like just switch demographics and start like just doing white people stuff or whatever or, yeah, or just yeah, go to yeah, the Latino crowd yeah, yeah. or just go switch it up. You can figure it out either way somehow. You know, yeah. so I mean that's that's my two cents. On. But you know what I'm saying, I, we appreciate you coming in. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Hey, you gave a lot of good insight mm -hmm. and uh, hey man. I, I had a blast, man. I really did. So, it was a good time, man. It was a really good time. Man. And you have been tuned into the More Than Luck podcast once again. <laughs> Thank and, you guys uh, for tuning in. For sure. On our celebrations, much love. <laughs> <laughs>